Someone better call and, I guess, resurrect Ursula K. Le Guin because I think she's out a royalty check on this one. Hello interwebs, I hope you're all doing well, and welcome to my review of the latest episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Season 1, Episode 6, Lift Us Where Suffering Cannot Reach. Up or suffering? Get, something like that. The title's a little bit of a mouthful, I'll be honest with all of you. Like, this title kind of reminds me of Star Trek Discovery Season 1 titles, like The Butcher's Knife Cares Not for the Lamb's Cry, or The Magic to Make the Sanest Man Go Mad. Like, just, just mumble mouth of titles. Um, but anyways, before we get into my review, let me just address the elephant in the room, namely, my face looks the same. I know I said last week that I was gonna be getting um, my facial harmonization surgery between the recording of last episode and this episode's review, but I was lucky enough to be uh, sent a screener for this episode uh, about a week early, which I was kind of shocked at. So uh, you're getting this beautiful face one more time. And honestly, uh, given when they sent this out, you might even get my face next week as well. So we'll depend on when the screeners come in and all that jazz, but uh, eventually my face will look new, but not yet. So we'll wait for that for next time. But enough about me, you didn't come here for me, you came here for Pike and the boys, so let's get into the review. And staying spoiler free up front, and then we'll get into spoilers in just a moment. On the surface, this episode feels like it should be an episode tailor-made for me. It feels like it has everything that I really love. As I kind of alluded to in the opening gag of this video, and I won't spoil which story it's referring to because that would kind of be a spoiler for the end revelation of the episode, but this story is very much trying to evoke a very specific Ursula K. Le Guin short story that was a very interesting morality tale. And on top of that, this episode also dives a lot into like alien politics. Like we get really ingrained into an alien civilization and learn about the intricacies of their world. And we have our crew trying to figure out what's going on and solve this larger mystery that sort of gets wrapped around into all this sort of political intrigue. In a lot of ways, this episode feels like one of those old, like, 1980s DC Comics Star Trek plots where it's just, you get to sort of sit in this really convoluted four-issue long story where you're learning about this alien civilization. You're like, what is going on? I'm very confused, but I'm mildly intrigued by all of it. And I, I feel like that vibe should be something that I really love, given, like, what I love about morality tales and Star Trek being political, and also I love political intrigue storylines. But that being said, I have to say, this ultimately is probably my least favorite episode of Strange New World so far, mostly because while I do love the concept of this episode and ultimately the end revelation of the episode and story is one that intrigues me quite a bit, what makes the Ursula K. Le Guin story that this is sort of evoking work is that that storyline was much more metaphorical. And when this story tries to take it and place it within a literal framework, like very much like trying to be like explain how this society would work, it doesn't work as well and ultimately leaves me having a lot of questions about like just the setup and payoff of this story. Not only that, the way that this episode tries to reveal its mystery ultimately leaves me questioning a lot of things along the way and leaving me more confused than actually invested in what's happening. And looking back on the episode now that I know what the sort of big revelation of the storyline is, I ultimately am like, a lot of this stuff doesn't line up and feels like it was just trying to force it this way in order to keep the mystery going. And I'll talk a little bit about those like nitpicks that I have throughout the episode towards the, uh, in the spoiler free section. But ultimately what I will say here is normally I wouldn't nitpick an episode to death, but because I found this plot to be so convoluted and trying to sort of like obfuscate this mystery, it ultimately led me to being really hyper specific and focusing in on the nitpicks because if you're going to have a mystery, you need to set it up and pay it off rather well. And ultimately just the way that this was built did not work for me. Also, it just frustrated me in terms of how this episode was structured because some important elements for what you would need to understand why this storyline goes this way aren't really revealed until almost halfway through the episode. And even then some of them are just revealed in one-off lines. And I'm like, that's deeply important for me to have known earlier in the story that you're just sort of like casually mentioning here and it sort of throws me off for wanting to really invest in this plot line that it's trying to give me. That all being said, I don't want to say that this episode is a complete and utter wash because this episode still underscores the continuing strength of Strange New Worlds, namely its actors as well as these small interpersonal discussions that we have between our characters, like moments between Pike and Uhura and La'an and all these little things are wonderfully portrayed and I absolutely adore them. So continually the actors and the small interpersonal discussions are fantastic throughout this show. 
But at the end of the day, to wrap up my thoughts though, I will say I am just kind of down on this episode and probably is my least favorite episode of Strange New Worlds so far. But all that being said, I need to get into spoilers to talk more specifically about why. So if you have not seen the episode, this is where you can get off. Get the hell out of here, damn it! I will hunt you down. I will hunt you down like a gorn. Okay, I'm sorry, I got very aggressive there. Apologies. Anyways, spoiler filled time. All right, now that we are in the spoiler filled section, I will say I have a lot of notes. We're gonna go through it because I'm honestly kind of fascinated by this episode because I understand what they were trying to go for. As I alluded to, this episode is very much trying to evoke specifically the Ursula K. Le Guin story, the ones who walk away from Omi laws, the whole story about a civilization that is built on the suffering of one child, one person, and if anyone shows that child kindness, that that means that everyone in the society will lose their utopian like world that they built up. It's a really fascinating morality tale that ultimately showcases that there are some people that choose to walk away from Omi laws, but no one ultimately decides to give the child that is suffering any kindness because that would mean that everyone has to suffer as well. And so it's this sort of meditation on this idea of like what we are willing to allow some other people to suffer in order to have this grand society that we've built up on. And this episode is very much getting in at that. But again, the problem that I referenced is that Ursula K. Le Guin's story is very much more meant to be a sort of metaphorical tale not something to be taken literally. And so when this episode tries to hide that sort of revelation, revelation that this kid that we've been following this whole episode is going to suffer for this paradise that this world has built, but then it tries to add a layer of mystery on top of that so we don't learn that until the end, it ultimately just makes me have a lot of questions as we're going along. And then once the revelation happens, I'm sort of like, why would you structure it this way? Because it leaves me just sort of confused ultimately and feeling like I need to rewatch the episode again and I did watch this episode twice by the way and even on the second viewing I'm sort of like ah, the way that you've sort of structured and set up this mystery just did not work for me and I want to talk a lot about why. So let's get into it. We open up the episode in the Majalan system where we learn that Pike has been here before and that he almost died. And I will say, I really love this opening interaction with Pike and Uhura, where they're in the turbo lift. Uh, again, this just showcases the continuing strength of Strange New Worlds, that even in an episode like this, where I'm not very hot on the plot of it, the interpersonal like relationships between these characters, like Pike joking around with Uhura and having some fun with her and sort of playing up the fact that Uhura is on rotation with La'an this episode, which by the way, I love that recurring bit that Uhura is like shifting to different departments throughout this season, because it gets us to introduce us to our characters, as well as like have Uhura learn more about uh, different stations on the ship and I just I think it's a clever little bit that they're doing to sort of have Uhura be this insight character into different departments and people on the ship. That being said though, why I love this gag with Pike, one thing that did confuse me and this is a little bit of an inconsistency, I feel like didn't Uhura and La'an come on the Enterprise at the same time in the pilot episode of this show? So why is everyone on the ship like Ortega seem to understand La'an's uh, security training better than Uhura was? Like I feel like they're getting back at this hazing idea that we saw back in episode 2 with Uhura that like everyone knows how things work on the ship and Uhura's like learning it, which makes sense, except for with La'an, because La'an was assigned to the Enterprise in the pilot at the same time that Uhura was. So I feel like Uhura shouldn't be behind on understanding some of the like lessons that La'an has. So that kind of threw me for a little bit. But then we get this attack sequence where we have two ships attacking each other and Pike coming to the rescue. And I did like when the one shuttle attacks Pike, Pike is like, damage? And he's like, why are they even bothering? Come on, man. I thought that was pretty cute. But then uh, Uhura shoots down the ship, which again was weird to me because I could buy that Uhura sort of either messed things up or the ship did something wrong and it would cause damage to the ship. Makes sense to me. But then Pike and crew did nothing to help rescue that ship. They just let it crash on that moon as we see later. I know they want to help the people that were being attacked first. That makes the most sense. But you're not going to like tractor beam them or try and save them from crash landing. It was just really weird to like see the Enterprise crew not care about the ship that they just basically destroyed and not try to save anyone's lives on it. But then we get Pike in the transporter room beaming people over to the ship, which again also confused me because it's like, why would Pike and Una go down to the transporter room? You were just in a combat situation. I feel like at least one of those two, maybe if Pike wanted to go down to figure out what was going on, leave Una on the bridge. It was just weird that both of them went down for this scene. But then we have Pike meeting up with Alora, who he clearly has a history with and some sexual tension, which was very palpable. And I love that Una was like, uh, I'm reading this. I can feel this. I know what's going on here. It was very adorable. But then we also get to meet the first servant with this, this little child who is of utmost importance to the Magellan system. We'll learn more about that as we go, as well as the first servant's biological father, but now who's just become his doctor because of the symbolic importance of this kid. So all of that was decently set up. 
But then we get a scene with Mbenga reading a chapter of his book to his child who he's stuck in the medical transporter as we learned a few episodes ago. And this scene also read really forced to me as well because it just ultimately leaves me confused. It's like, I guess his kid is rematerialized every few days or something like that, which works with what they were saying about to make sure her pattern doesn't degrade. But then I'm left questioning like, okay, from her point of view, is she just transporting in and just getting a book read to her? And it's just been like three years for Mbenga's time. But for her, it's been like, just like reading reading one book over the past few hours and the fact that Mbenga is like losing the details of like which chapter he's read and she didn't stop him. It just, it felt a little bit of a forced scene and I was left ultimately confused by what this kid is experiencing from her perspective versus like what Mbenga is trying to do in terms of caring for her. I, it was just weird to me. But then we start to get some of the backstory on this first servant kid as we have Alora explaining his importance to Pike. And again, this left me questioning, like obviously she was hiding something. I got that right from the first scene and her like wanting to shoot down Una from doing an investigation. I like that, that like read to me like, oh, something's a little bit off here, but we trust her a little bit because Pike trusts her. So I like that that throwing us off the trail a hair, but giving us enough clues to figure that out here. But the thing that threw me was just like, if this kid is so important, why did you not have like a ton of armed guards around? Like ultimately we learn at the end of the episode that this kid is necessary for the entire civilization to survive. So like, why would you not super protect this kid. Why would you just be on a small little dinky shuttle? And why would he, it just, it blew my mind that it just felt very forced to get the situation going. Um, and ultimately even more so considering what we learn later in the episode. And then also back down in sick bay, we have Mbenga and Nurse Chapel checking out the first servant. And I like this scene in terms of the small interpersonal stuff. Like I said, Nurse Chapel being like a very heartwarming, lovable uh, nurse to the kid was absolutely wonderful. But we also learned that this um, civilization has really advanced technology, that they are able to cure a lot of diseases that has Mbenga interested because it might be able to save his daughter. And so that kind of ties into Mbenga's storyline, but I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second because I have thoughts on how that played out. But then we get a scene with La'an and Uhura going down to the crashed ship to discover what was going on there. And again, this just threw me with the logic of it because I'm like, okay, I get that Uhura is on security detail. It makes sense that she would be on this trip, but La'an doesn't have anyone else besides Uhura as her backup. Like this ship was literally attacking the Enterprise. They could want to murder you and you're just gonna have a cadet who doesn't have any training as your backup. Felt a little bit forced to me. But then here they discover this like neural dampener thing that was supposedly going to be used on the first servant. We'll talk more about that in a second. But then we also find this coin, which apparently we learned from Alora is a coin given to the guards of the first servant. And if it's defaced, it sort of like represents symbolically that they betrayed a Magellan sort of history in protecting the first servant, which was interesting enough, but this initially had me very confused because I'm like, okay, this means one of the guards betrayed the first servant and was on that ship. But then we immediately go to a scene where Pike and Alora are on the, her planet and they're sort of testing the guards to like see if they have their coin. But I'm like, but you have the coin. So why would, why would he still have the coin and have defaced it? It was just very confusing about what that meant. And I guess on rewatch, I now am sort of realizing that the coin that they found was probably from a guard that had abandoned the Magellan system years ago and had went to this other colony that uh, had supposedly like walked away from Omilaws, I guess, walked away from Magellus because of the treatment of the first servant. And so I get that, but when I'm watching it the first time, I was just confused because I'm like, what, so this guy does have the coin? Like, I thought it would be clever to be like, show us your coin and it's not the actual, co like they don't have a coin, but the guy does have a coin. And so I was just a little bit confused by that. But then we get this chase scene where this uh, guard gets revealed to be the one who betrayed them and Pike and everyone sort of chase him down and he is very clearly murderous. Like he literally shot and murdered and disintegrated another guard and is willing to kill people to get away. And Pike finally confronts him and grabs him. That's all fine. But then Alora steps in front of Pike and gets like right next to the guy and allows him the chance to like grab her and almost like kill her. Like that was wild to me. I'm like, why in the world? Number one, why would Pike allow her to do that? And why would she do that? Is she incredibly stupid? Like it was just the blocking of that scene was so incredibly dumb to me. And it just threw me. I'm like, why? St no, don't step between Pike and the guy. Uh, when, especially when Pike has his gun set to disintegrate and this guy wants to kill you as well. Like it was just, bonkers to me how they decided to block that. But then during all of this, we get some scenes with Uhura and La'an, where La'an sort of pushes Uhura to start using her ability as a linguist to translate these data cards that they found on the ship, which worked for me because I'm like, oh yeah, Uhura using her skill for security. That makes sense. 
But I was also weirded out by like, you're in the middle of an investigation. Why would Starfleet Protocol prevent you from actually investigating these yourselves? It was just felt a little bit forced to get Uhura to be the one to sort of impress La'an rather than it coming naturally out of the situation. So I just, I was bothered by that sort of forced conflict there. Though I did really like the scene with Kirk and Uhura. Uh, nice to see Kirk show back up. He hasn't been in the show since episode two. So nice to see him again here and him being like conflict diverse was, was very cute. And then I also did like that La'an sort of let Uhura be able to be the one to present to the captain her findings because it was her who figured it out. So I, I like that and Lon showing like she supports the people underneath her rather than taking credit. I thought that was nice. But then during all of this, we get a few scenes with the first servant, Mbenga, Spock, and uh, the first servant's father. And I enjoyed these scenes for the most part. Like there was the wonderful little scene where we learned that the kid was incredibly smart and Spock sort of like being impressed by him and almost smiling. Like the way Ethan Peck played that scene was adorable. Like him not like completely smiling at Spock, but you can be like, oh, this kid. This kid's got it. I enjoyed that. But then we also get some conversations between Mbenga and this kid's father, Elder Dumal, I think was his name. And we learn that Mbenga's really interested in this technology to help save his daughter, but this guy is not really forthcoming. And I'm like, that was actually the more interesting conflict to me. It's only relegated to a few scenes here. And I'm like, it would have been more interesting to me if there's this great technology that is able to save Mbenga's daughter, but he's not able to access it because they're not willing to give it to him. That would have been a great like prime directive storyline and a sort of a morality tale, but ultimately it's relegated right off to the side here. And I'm like, oh, that was actually the much more interesting story to me. And we don't get any of that, which was uh, kind of disappointing. And this is even more frustrating because at the end of the episode, this father is more willing to give Mbenga this technology in order to possibly help his daughter. And that would have felt more fulfilling to me if there had been some sort of connection between Mbenga and this father. I mean, we ultimately learn that the elder is trying to save his son, becoming this sort of battery for this world. And I would have liked to see a little bit more of the connection between Mbenga and this father to make that payoff at the end of the episode where once the father's child has been killed, the first servant has sort of been sacrificed to the planet. He feels like, oh, I can still help somebody by helping Mbenga. Again, that reads to me and it tracks, but we don't get enough scenes to really flesh that out so it doesn't have the emotional weight that I feel like it should have uh, by the end of the episode. And so I'm like, oh, that was really, you had a much more interesting concept than what you ultimately went with here, at least in terms of how it could have played out emotionally. And I, I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get as much of that fleshing out as we could have. Continuing on though, we get a wonderful little sex scene <laughs> between Pike and Alora. This was actually probably one of my favorite scenes of the episode, not because I got to see my, my boy Pike without a shirt on. I was very pleased at that, but I also liked that it connected into Pike's larger arc where he was sort of thinking about his future and like what he can do. And Alora offering the chance like, hey, we have the medical technology and we might be able to save you. And us knowing from what we know from past Star Treks that Pike was sort of relegated to this chair, that this medical technology might actually be able to save him. And so that sort of being something that intrigues Pike in this situation and sort of possibly being a motivator for him to actually believe in the society. And so all of that kind of worked within this scene to sort of set up Pike being more emotionally invested in this world, not only for his larger arc, but also because he clearly has some sexual tension with Alora. So I enjoyed this scene for that. But then we get Uhura revealing to Pike that this colony that supposedly attacked the first servant is actually a colony of Magellans who left their society and we're wondering why. Now clearly, as I sort of mentioned earlier, this is clearly meant to evoke the idea of the ones who walked away from Omilaws because we learned that Magellan society is sort of this perfect utopian world, but because they make this kid suffer, there are people that choose to walk away rather than sort of be complicit in this child's suffering. Again, the ones who walk away from Omilaws. And so I like that sort of like subtle mystery seeding here of like, why would they leave the society? That makes no sense. Um, so this sort of creating a mystery using the same foundation of Ursula K. Le Guin's classic story, that ultimately was interesting. But then we get a scene where the first servant and his father want to beam away and they sort of get kidnapped by a ship. And I was kind of frustrated. I'm like, there's a combat cruiser that managed to sneak up on the Enterprise and beam people off the ship without them being aware of it until after the fact. I was like, that's wild. Though I did like the revelation that the reason that they were able to do this was because the Elder gave the information to this ship. And so that that wasn't like a thing that would normally be able to be done, but it just sort of happened surprisingly here. It was just a little bit weird in how it was executed because it made the Enterprise crew look like chumps. And I could have actually believed that it would have happened. It was just kind of worded weirdly to make it sound like, oh yeah, there's a ship that we just totally missed over here. And I wish they had sort of like made that a little bit clearer what was going on. 
I will say though, when the ship blew up after they tried to stop it from going to warp, I did actually gasp. Like I was like, oh shit, the kid was on that. That actually got me and I was actually shocked. I'm like, oh, that's an interesting swerve for this story to take that the kid actually died there. Like what are we going to do? But then we ultimately get the revelation that Ahura figures out that the elder was actually trying to kidnap his own kid for some mysterious reason that we'll learn in a second. And I liked that Uhura figured this out, but it did kind of lead to that forced moment where we have La'an sort of saying like, oh, this was like security lesson number seven. And I'm like, oh, that was kind of a disappointing and forced payoff, wasn't it? Like it was, it was, it was a bit of a forced payoff to this sort of thing that they had set up in the first scene with Pike and Uhura that I, it didn't work as well for me. But I did like Uhura figuring that out. One important thing here too, though, that really frustrated me was at this moment, after the first servant supposedly had died, we get Alora revealing to Pike that like, oh, the kid's dead? That means our whole society is ending. Like our planet is full of lava and our floating cities will all fall and we'll all die because this one child isn't going to be here. And this had me having a bunch of questions because number one, that's an important piece of information for this story. The fact that this whole society should not exist because they all live on like floating cities, this sort of like paradise in the sky idea. And I wish we had established more that this was a utopia world. We got little hints of that through their medical technology, like clearly they are a very advanced uh, technological race. But in order to pay off this idea that this child needs to die in order for this society to survive and thrive, despite everything that sort of, again, Omila's Ursula K. Le Guin idea, we really needed to establish that this was a paradise and that this was the trade-off that they were making. Like, oh, this world is so great and grand and this trade-off of this kid is how we get to hold on to that. You really needed to build that up for me and they didn't really build it up properly enough. And it's kind of just casually thrown into this like one offhanded line that like, oh, uh, our world is actually made up of lava and we're a paradise built over this like lava world. And I'm like, oh, that, that's an important piece of world building for this mystery that you did not establish prior that ultimately just devalues the end um, sort of horrific revel revelation about the first servant that could have been much more powerful if you had built it up. But then we discover that the first servant is in hiding and that he uh, gets saved by Spock having found out a signal that the kid made. I like that that was very smart of him. And then we get Pike going down to this celebration of the kids ascending. And at this point, I kind of figured what was coming. I had kind of pieced together all the clues, so it didn't necessarily hit me as hard as I wish it could have when Pike goes down with Alora to see the kid ascend. And we ultimately learn that this kid is strapped into the machine and that is what leads uh, the society to survive. And it's on the back of the suffering and death of these children. Like that is a horrific trade-off. And I love that that is the morality tale that this episode tried to tackle like that idea of like are we willing to let someone suffer for the entirety of our own benefit again that very clear allusion to Ursula K Le Guin but the way that this mystery had been built as I've kind of pointed out throughout this whole video there was just so many inconsistencies it wasn't properly built in a way to make the absolute horror of this uh, decision be highlighted and so it ultimately made this sort of horror fall flat other than just the shock value of a kid being suffering for everyone else like if they had built up like this was a paradise, this world is great and amazing, and oh my gosh, how is this even possible? And sort of the more moral complexity of the like disparate sort of things that we got to see here, as well as showing up some of the inconsistencies with how this mystery had been developed, this would have been a real gut punch of a revelation. But just because of the sort of wonkiness of the writing in order to try and obfuscate some of the story beats from the viewers, it left this ultimately feeling not as powerful as it could have been. Other than I'm sure just the shock value that many of us would feel just knowing that a kid is going to suffer for everyone else. Like, I'm sure we all feel bad for that for a lot of different reasons. Like, kid suffering is awful. But I just don't feel like the story ultimately paid off the weight of the reveal. And also, too, there's a scene earlier where we had the elder sort of reveal to Una what was happening and saying, like, oh, I did this to try and save my kid. And again, I like this idea that the father was trying to save his child from this horrific fate and he became one that walked away from Omilaz because it was his kid. And again, that would have been an interesting avenue to explore, but it's not really explored all that enough. And I'm also left wondering like why he didn't tell the Enterprise crew right off the bat, like this is what's going on. Can I have asylum for myself and my kid? Because I feel like if he had done that instantaneously, the second that they appeared on the ship, uh, the kid wouldn't have died and he would have gotten everything that he wanted if he had just asked for asylum right off the bat instead of being a giant asshole the entire episode. Just left me like being like, why wouldn't he have done that? And it was very clearly done just to keep the history of the episode going rather than ultimately what would have made most sense for the characters involved in this mystery to have done. 
But then this sort of wraps us out of the episode where we have Pike sort of uh, standing up to Alora and saying like, ha, how dare you? This is awful and really horrific. And she's saying like, well, what are you gonna do with us? There's nothing you can do. Again, also a little bit forced where it's like, well, we don't really know why it works this way, but it works this way because our elders made it. I'm like, it's kind of weird and messed up that you wouldn't think of anywhere else or like, just like, move to another planet. Like, again, they had really needed to build up that this was a paradise to make it make sense to me that they wouldn't have just wanted to leave the planet um, and not sacrifice these children because otherwise it just does not work and it kind of falls flat on its face. And I did like the idea that Pike sort of has to wrestle with like, there's nothing I can do. It's a horrific situation and they're not part of the Federation. So shit, this is, this is awful. But again, it just does not work in terms of the morality tale that they're trying to tell because they didn't build it up well enough. And then I already spoke about the Mbenga stuff. Like, I, it's nice to see that he gets a little bit of his kid's storyline moved forward here, but not, again, paid off as well as it could have been. So at the end of the day, now that I'm sort of done going over this episode, I hope I've made clear to you that, like, the idea of this episode, the concept of this, the sort of, like, using a kind of classic tale from Ursula K. Le Guin to inform this interesting sort of alien civilization political intrigue mystery plot is on the surface, something that I feel like I should love, but just the way that it was structured, the way that it was built, the way that they tried to have a mystery around it when it just didn't work in terms of what the characters would have actually done, just makes this episode fall flat on its face for me. And again, makes this probably my least favorite episode of Strange New Worlds, despite the fact that it probably could have been my favorite if it had just been handled a little bit better and sort of shored up some of the scripting problems that I have with it throughout it. So those are ultimately my thoughts on this episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, but I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Did you actually like this one a lot more than I did? Because I think there is some interesting ideas and concepts here to like. Have you read um, Ones Who Walk Away From Omen Laws, Ursula K. Le Guin's story? I would highly recommend it. If you liked this concept, go and read that story. It's only like three or four pages, a very short read, very interesting idea. Um, I would highly recommend checking that out. And then on top of that, thank you so much everyone for some of your well wishes that you had sent my way for my surgery that is coming up. I've gotten some of those already. So uh, I'm very excited. I am less than a week away, though by the time you are watching this, I will have already had the surgery. So please send some well wishes in the comments uh, if you have not already. I does mean a lot to me and they do um, make me smile as I'm sure I will need as my face is probably recovering from all the crap that's been done to it over the past few days. Uh, but beyond all of that, just thank you everybody. I wish you all well and I hope that you as always live long and prosper.